gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, whether they're Jew or Greek. Friend, let me say this morning that an individual thinks that he's not accountable to God Almighty and he thinks he's got some sort of an excuse that makes it so that God Almighty couldn't judge him for his sin. He's mistaken and the Bible says so and it's true. And so every person needs Jesus Christ. And a person that would have the argument that, well, uh, God shouldn't condemn me because, you know, there's other people that He's saved that are more wicked than me, and God shouldn't save them, and so I'm not going to trust Christ, friend. Let me say to you, you've added your own pile of sin, and that's what matters in your life, and you need Jesus Christ. You need to be saved. <coughs> friend, if you were to say, well, I've been too bad, I've been too wicked, I think, I think that it's a little too late for me. And I've heard this before. I, I don't know how many times that I've had folks say, you know, uh, Pastor... Or, or Ryan or whatever they say, they say, you know, uh, I believe what, what the Bible says about my sin. I believe what it says about Jesus. But the problem is, is that it's too late for me. I've, I've gone too far. I, there, there's too much that's been, that's happened to me. You ought to read the book of Ecclesiastes where the scripture says, a, a, dead, a, a live dog is better than a dead lion. And what the scripture is teaching is that a person that still has life still has hope. If God hasn't taken your life, then friend, it's because He wants you to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, and so you still have, there's still uh, hope for, for you living and knowing Jesus Christ, and so God will save you. That's the answer to that question. I've had people say to me, I think they're a reprobate. I don't think they could ever trust Jesus Christ. Friend, if that were true, they'd be in hell, and that would, the death seals uh, all, all decisions. A friend, if a person's living, then God can save them, and He wants to, and Christ's righteousness abounds, and He's able to do so. Does that encourage you? Does that make you want to live for Christ? Does that help you to understand that, uh, friend, even though you're saved, that, that God's grace still abounds for, for Christians as well, and that the Bible is true when it says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, my friend, there's no lack of grace. Big a pile as there is of wickedness, big a pile as there is of sin. I am telling you there is heaped up in, uh, in the person and work of Jesus Christ far more grace that abounds unto righteousness before God Almighty. Heavenly Father, help us to believe the Scripture in this matter. And Lord, I ask that as Christians we would be convinced that we are wicked. God, help us not to try to uh, say something inappropriate like we could be saved and or even to think that our works would make us acceptable in your eyes. But help us to see the truth that we're justified by faith without the works of the law. And then, Lord, help us to see the truth that we looked at today. And that is that Jesus Christ's righteousness is able to abound. Lord, you've offered the gift of eternal life to anyone who will receive it. And today I ask that if there's a person here in this room that has not received Jesus, that they not only see their need, but that God today they'd be willing to trust Jesus. Lord, I pray for Christians that are here today that they would have this matter settled in their heart about the character and nature of God Almighty, that they would see how it is that you see them as they've received Christ and they have been pronounced justified and it's been imputed to their account that they're righteous. And God, help us to serve and to live and to preach this gospel. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have an opportunity at this time. We're going to have the invitation in our church. And if you're visiting with us, let me, before we begin, just to describe to you what the invitation is. The invitation is a time which, by what it says, that we invite you. If God's spoken to your heart about a matter, and He showed you a truth in Scripture, and you would have to say, God, I didn't agree with that, or I didn't think that, but your Holy Spirit has showed me that this is an area of my life where either I'm, I'm living in a way that's inconsistent with the Scripture, which is, by the way, sin, and uh, I, I, there's a matter that you, you've spoken to me about, and I need to respond to it. We have an invitation time in our church so that you don't just hear truth, but that uh, if God's spoken to you, it's because He wants you to speak to Him, respond to Him. And so during our time of invitation, we sing a, an invitational song. And while we sing it, if God's spoken to your heart, we would invite you to do business with Him. Take care of the matter that God's convicted you about or showed you about. You're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus to save you. You've never uh, it, you've never uh, had a time when you say, God, I'm utterly wicked. There's no question I'm a sinner. But I realize that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. He became sin for me. And that if, if, I, if I ask you to save me, He'll save me because of what you did when you died and were buried and rose again. 
And I want to live with Christ. I want to have new life in Jesus Christ. I want to be saved this morning. During the invitation time, you know right where you're standing or sit, where you're standing at, uh, you could just go right to where God is in heaven because God says you ask Him to, He'll save you. And you could just pray and say, God, I want to be saved because of what Jesus did when He became sin for me. I want to receive the righteousness of Christ. You say, if I ask you, if I call in the name of the Lord, I'll be saved. And that's what I'm doing. I want to be saved. God will save you as simply as that. And I'd be glad to open a Bible and help you with that or have somebody help you with that during the invitation. If you're a Christian here today, and I would suspect that that would be true for at least most of us here today, uh, then, friend, God would probably not be speaking to you about your need for salvation, but He would be talking to you about your need to live with Christ. Your need to understand that God's Christ's righteousness is much more abounding than sin. It may be that you're here today and you're saved, but you've been snared by sin and you've been controlled by it. And friend, you ought to be free to live in Jesus Christ. Christ's righteousness abounds more than sin. You understand that Bible truth, it will help you have victory over your sin. Maybe God's convicted you about something. The invitation is the appropriate time for you to deal with that. Right where you stand at, you could go to the Lord and you could pray or you could kneel where you're standing at. And, let, and just do business with God. He spoke to you because He wants you to respond. The invitation is the appropriate time for that. Uh, our pianist isn't here, so we'll just sing without it, the piano this morning. But we're going to stand at this time. We're going to turn to page 246. We'll sing softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. If God's spoken to you, my friend, He's calling, and He wants a response from you. Would you do business with Him? Please feel freedom in the invitation to do so. Page 241, that's, that's page 246 I meant to say, softly and tenderly, page 246, and we'll just sing it. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting and watching. Washing for you and for me. Come home, come home. You are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not His mercies? Mercies for you and for me. Come home, come home. You are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling home. Wonderful love he's promised. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised. Promised for you and for me. For we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Pardon for you and for me. Sing it out now. Come home. so much for the opportunity to meet here. I want to thank you for a Bible that's true and that's relevant and that shows us your truth, teaches us about you, and shows us our own wicked hearts. Lord, we thank you for abounding grace. I trust that you'll, we ask that you would keep us safe today, watch <coughs> over us, and help us to be back here this evening to receive the preaching of your word. We pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 Dismissed.